You know that feeling when you're doing awesome, but everything's somehow terrible? Today wasn't like that. Not getting out the door as early as I wanted to be, uh, but still better than yesterday, uh, which is good. So I think I'll, I'll have time to eat and still get to day three of the marathon on time, which is pretty swell. It is pretty toasty out here. As I probably would have told you in the previous video, I bagged 353, 500, 353,500, which is good for about 118 digs, something like that. I'm very pleased. And we're gonna chip up. Okay, let's do this. Uh, I am talking to you guys into this little thing because it seems to do a lot better when the air is on, which is super loud through this. May I, here's what it sounds like. It's not pretty. We just want to get started, talk through some hands, go through some spots. This is marathon day three. Uh, I was super excited to make it. I uh, made it with a really great stack, 353,500 and came into what looked like a decent table draw to start the day. A couple people I recognized. Uh, I had Michael Kane on my immediate left. Heard he was pretty solid, but I'd never played with him before. Uh, I also had Matt Stout at the table, but I'd never played a hand with him. Um, and then everybody after that who was interesting in terms of being well known was on later tables. So I'll talk about them as the hands come up. Let's get into day three. Started the day at the 1500, 3K, 500 any level. Over 100 big blinds. In this hand, the button opens to 6500. I'm in the big blind with ace deuce offsuit. I three bet and I make it 20K. He calls and the flop comes 652. I decide to check and the button checks back. The turn is a pretty awesome card. It is an offsuit ace. I decide to bet 18,000. I think he's gonna check back the flop with a lot of ace X thinking he's good or can't really get me to fold much. This is a pretty great card because I now cooler a lot of those hands. He calls pretty quickly. The river is now one of the worst cards in the deck. It pairs the board higher than the two. It's a six. I decided to check here. I definitely can't get value from anything. I think all his pocket pairs but the flop. He checks it back. I turn it over knowing it's probably not going to be good. He turns over ace eight and he takes that one down. In this next hand, I open 9-7 suited in the hijack. The cutoff calls. The big line also calls. We go three-way to a flop. The flop comes 6-6-5. Six, six, I decide to bet 11,000. The cutoff calls. We go heads up to a turn. Turn is the four spades, and I pick up some equity here. I decide to bet 17,000. He ends up calling, and the river's a pretty interesting card. It's the seven of diamonds. At this point, I figure the villain can have a lot of missed flush draws. He can have some 5x. And I'm now beating a lot of those hands. I think a six is going to raise at some point as well. So I actually don't think I lose to a whole lot except for maybe like pocket eights, pocket nines, hands like that where he might not three bet preflop and he just calls even though he has a small over pair. I go ahead and decide to check. I think I have enough showdown value. He checks it back. I turn over my hand and it's good. In this next hand, we are now at the 2k, 4k level with a 500 ante still. There is a shove for 31 and a half thousand. The small line calls and I'm left with a kind of weird decision in the big blind with pocket eights. I think, I think it's probably just a fold. Once the hijack calls, it's going to be a little bit tricky to play this hand in a bloated pot, even though I'm in position. And I'm not really getting the right price to set mine against the small blinds calling range because he's not necessarily only calling with, he's not only calling with like Queens plus. Now you can maybe make a case for four betting and I did actually consider it, but I'm pretty deep with him. So making it a size where I get fold equity and get to get heads up against the shover is kind of awkward. I'm not sure there's really a good way to do that. So I kind of just prefer a fold. I end up taking what I think might be the worst option and I call. Flop comes king 10 5, leads out for 55k, and there's just no way I can do anything else but fold here. Uh, I let it go. 
The shover has queen five of diamonds and the small blind has king jack. Probably could have gotten him off that preflop and end up taking it down. Ward runs out with a jack and then a king. Um, but there you go. Can't play all of them well. In this next hand, uh, we're up another level. It's at the 2500 5k level. Still a 500 ante. I am down from my starting stack for the day to about 280k. I open ace 10 of clubs to 10,000 under the gun. Under the gun plus two is a little bit of a tricky player. He's been free betting a decent amount. Uh, he makes it 30k. It folds around to me and a lot of times against a lot of players I would just fold here. Um, pretty much at the bottom of my opening range and I'm going to be out of position if I call. Four betting kind of sucks because I have to put in a lot of my stack and he's wrapping strength by three betting. Against this particular player I don't really like folding because I think he's going to be three betting a lot even though I'm under the gun. Uh, he's going to three bet fairly small pairs even and definitely worse ace x so i think a four bit could definitely be reasonable but because my stack is still pretty big i felt like calling and just playing flops was okay i decided to call and i catch a pretty good flop for this hand it's 10 8 3. i check he c bets 25k and i call i don't think there's really any reason to do anything but call here the turn is the queen of diamonds not the best card because it does improve some of his bluffs on the flop like ace queen Maybe is king queen sometimes, but most of his range doesn't improve on this card. So I check it over to him. He checks it back, and I'm feeling pretty good about the strength of my hand now. The river is a three, which pairs the board, and I'm left with an option whether to check or bet. I think I could definitely check and let him bet one more time, but I thought there were hands that he might hero call but not bet the river with, like ace king. Uh, so I decided to bet 42k, and he just folds. It might be a little too thin actually because he has hands like jacks for sure and he might play queens plus this way as well sometimes and if i'm not getting called by like pocket nines or ace king it's a little bit too thin i think i prefer checking in this next hand i've been moved to a new table that i think is significantly tougher uh, i've got mercier across the table from me Faraz jaka is on his immediate left and the rest of the players at the table aren't really schmucks either they're pretty good so my strategy for playing in this table is pretty much going to be try to be a little more straightforward than usual, uh, a little bit less bluffing, definitely tightening up preflop. But in this hand, Mercier opens to 10,500 in middle position, folds around with a small blind who calls, and I have king-jack offsuit in the big blind, and I call as well. We catch a pretty decent flop for our hand. It's ace-king-jack rainbow. It checks to Mercier, and he bets just 12,000. I guess it's not that small of a sizing, but I was expecting a little bit bigger on this kind of board. I guess maybe he was thinking that this board is better for his range, so he doesn't really need to size that big. The small blind folds, and I guess I could check-raise here, but what I was thinking is that if I check-raise here, it kind of announces the strength of my hand. This is one of the worst hands that I could check-raise for value. And I have pretty far from the nuts. There's also bad turn and river cards that can come out. And I'm not really sure what I'm getting called by when I check raise. I don't think he's folding ace queen to one check raise, but I also don't think I'm getting stacks in and being profitable. So I just decide to call. The turn's the nine of hearts, which, which puts a backdoor flush draw out there. I check. He now bets 38,000, which is just a large bet compared to his flop sizing. Again, I don't really see a big reason to check raise here. Uh, I don't really have any bluffs in this spot, so I think calling my whole range is probably good. Uh, the, like the one hand that maybe you would want to check raise is like the nuts, <laughs> but at that point I think it's probably better check call as well to let him have whatever bluffs he might have in at the river. So I call. The river comes an offsuit deuce. I check again and he now shoves for 105,500. It's not an easy spot. Uh, against a passive player, I think it's probably a fold. Uh, against players who overvalue one pair, it's like a snap call. Um, but, you know, he can have like four combos of the nuts. He can have ace king and ace jack. Uh, he can have every set combination. And there's, at first glance, there's not really a lot of good bluff combinations for him to have. But when I started to think about it, I thought that, you know, I had enough perceived ASEX in my range, one pair, that he could think he could get me off of. And realistically, I think the ASEX that I do get to this river with 
I'm not excited about calling it off unless it's specifically maybe ace jack or ace nine. And even then, I'm not pumped about it. So being fairly close to the top of my range here, I mean, kind of in the middle, but I think he has enough bluffs. I decided to call. He turns over pocket tens and my hand is good. That was a pretty interesting bluff from him. He blocks the nuts, but he also blocks a lot of the hands that I could fold that beat him, like ace 10, king 10, jack 10. So it's a pretty interesting spot from him. But hey, I got to bust Mercier. That was pretty cool. I moved to a new table again, and I have about 500,000 now, which is awesome at this point in the day. I open ace king offsuit under the gun to 11,000 and fold around the small blind, who is the only caller. The flop is 10-5-4 rainbow, he checks, I decide to c-bet 10,000, and he calls. Turn is pretty good card, it's a king, and he checks again. I go ahead and bet 20,000, thinking that this is such a good bluff card that most people are aware that it's a good double barrel spot, and I'm just going to get value from a lot of his one pair hands. He does in fact call, and the river comes another four. Uh, he did something interesting physically that made me think it was possible he improved on the river but people fold a decent amount of 4x preflop even in the small blind in a tournament where there's annies so i kind of discounted that a little bit particularly when he decided to check rather than lead the river but i also thought that his range was probably going to be pretty weak at this point and not really love facing a bet so i decided to just size up a little bit and i make 30,000. he tanked for a long time but ended up calling with an unknown hand take that one down so the same player from the ace-king hand opens the button to 11,000, and I'm in the big blind with queen-jack offsuit. I could 3-bet here, but I decided to make the call since I think I'm going to play pretty well out of position with this hand, and I should be very far ahead of his button opening range, so I didn't really want to turn this hand into a bluff. The flop comes 9-5-3 rainbow. I check, and he decides to check it back, which surprised me a little bit at the time. I thought it was possible he had something with showdown value like ace-x, or that he was just kind of giving up uh, with some kind of small small cards hand. He could also have like a 5 or a 3 in his hand somehow and just not really know what to do, so he just checks it back for showdown value. The turn brings an offsuit 9, and I just decided to check. I think in retrospect I prefer leading uh, because he's shown weakness, and I have more 9x in my range than he can, particularly when he checks back to flop. He now bets 11,000, and... I'm pretty skeptical. I don't think he's going to turn an ace into a bluff here, and I don't think he's necessarily going to bet a 5 for value either. So that means I'm pretty much beating everything except for King X that he decides to turn into a bluff. And there's a bunch of smaller cards that he would turn into bluffs as well. So I think I'm far enough ahead to call, particularly when I have two overs. The river's an offsuit king, and I check again. He now bets 24,000, and... I thought this was an interesting spot because given my reads on the turn, he shouldn't really have a lot of hands that beat us. Uh, he would probably value bet a king if he gets here in this way with a king, but it's hard for him to really have a lot of those compared to the smaller cards that are nothing. He's definitely not betting a five for value at this point, and I still don't think he has a nine. So what the hell? I call with queen high. Uh, he turns over jack 10 offsuit. And I get to show down the winner, no pair. Not even the best no pair. This one caught a lot of looks from the rest of the table. Uh, a lot of people were shocked, said it was an amazing call. Uh, I think, if anything, my turn play was a mistake. I could have just folded there or led. Um, but I think once it played out that way on the turn, the river is not an easy call, but I think it's the correct call. In this next hand, there's an early position open to 12,000. The villain from the previous two hands flats in the hijack. I'm on the button with pocket tens, and it's hard to explain. I just got a little bit of a vibe that early position was like really, really strong. And I didn't think three betting was really gonna be correct against what I perceived he was gonna have in this spot. So I just called. Uh, I figure I'm pretty much set mining actually, and there's not really many boards I love, but at this price with Annie's, with the stack sizes that we have, I think it's fine. The big blind ends up calling as well, and we go four ways to a flop. The flop comes above average. It is 10-9-7. The big blind checks, and early position doesn't think that long. He just rips it in there for 120,000. The hijack actually thinks for a little while and folds. 
and I have one of the easiest, fastest calls of my life. I put it in there, big blind folds, and early position turns over pocket queens. He is crushed when he sees my hand. Uh, I definitely felt for him. It was a tough spot. I think most people would expect me to three bet that kind of hand pre-flop as well. Um, but I will also say that his sizing makes it really hard for anybody to call what's significantly worse. The turn brings a bit of a sweat with the jack of clubs, giving him some outs. But the river is the good old ace of hearts, and I stack that player. So at this point, I've got a whopping 790k. We're going into the 3k, 6k, 1k any level. Fantastic spot to be in, really. Uh, being this deep is amazing at this stage of the tournament. We're on day three, and even though it's a very slow structure, having this many big blinds in the money is fantastic. I ended up chipping down to about 720k just from not really getting any playable hands and just kind of waiting it out patiently. In this hand, there's an old guy who opens in the cutoff. He opens in the cutoff to 17,000 and we're pretty deep. So I decided to flat with 8-6 suited on the button. I could just fold this, I could three bet it. I just decided to flat because we're deep. I think I'm gonna be able to play some profitable post-flop spots. Sorry, there's a guy in sunglasses walking with like a huge thing of water, <laughs> got distracted. That big line calls as well, and we go three ways to flop. Flop is king seven five, two tone. The big line checks and the cutoff bets 25,000. I know he's capable of C betting with air, so given the fact that I can probably bluff on hearts and I make my hand with six outs, and sometimes just hitting a pair will be enough to win at showdown, I decide to call. Big line folds and we go heads up to the turn. Turn is the 10 of clubs. The cutoff checks, which is not too surprising given what I think he has pre and on the flop. I go ahead and just decide to bet. I bet 40K and the cutoff folds pretty quickly. So we take that one down. Okay, so this next hand is at the 4K, 8K level with a 1K ante. I have about 700,000. Couldn't get a lot going in the last level. Won and lost a couple very small pots. Uh, but still a great stack to have here. There's an open from early position to 17,000 and I'm on the button with jack 10 of clubs. I call. Uh, I don't think there's really much point in three betting this player with this hand. It's going to play pretty well, especially in position. The flop comes queen, eight, five, rainbow, and he C bets. He bets 28,000 and I call. Uh, I think he's going to C bet most of his range on this board. I do have a gut shot and a backdoor flush draw. And since I have position, it's going to be easier for me to bluff. The turn is a pretty interesting card. It's the Queen of Diamonds, and he now bets 55,000. The Queen is interesting because I think that there's not that many value hands he can have that he'll value bet now. Things like Kings and Aces, I think he's just going to check. He's not going to like this card. Ace, Queen, and King, Queen, he'll obviously bet. Uh, he might bet with boats, I guess. So... I don't really have anything at this point, and I think he's repping a lot like Ace-King and Ace-Jack still a lot of the times, where he's just trying to get me to fold some sort of a one-pair hand. Uh, I raised to 125000 uh, Now, I still like my play, but what happens next is definitely not good. He just calls. <laughs> so, I think I'm definitely right in my read that he doesn't have Kings or Aces. I think he... He definitely has a queen in this spot now. There's almost no question. Uh, if a nine comes, I still expect my hand to be good, but really not excited about the situation. River comes to two of diamonds. He checks. I check it back because I'm very confident he has a queen. We're never getting him to fold. And he is visibly distraught when I check back, and he slams down pocket queens. Yep, he flop top set. He seabed it like a boss turned quads and somehow managed to find a double barrel <laughs> and just calls and then you know the rest. So that one was a little embarrassing. Uh, I've never had, I don't think I've ever had a bluff go so badly where I just run it into quads in what I think was a good spot. But you know, it happens. This level didn't really go that well for me, and I play another hand where I think I made a mistake. I open King-10 offsuit in middle position. Maurice Hawkins, who has been at the table for a little while now, calls on the button. The flop comes Jack-10-3, and I check call a bet of 20,000. Turns the four of diamonds, brings in a flush, gives me a backdoor flush draw. I check, and he checks it back. The river's the three of clubs. I check, which I think is fine, but... He now bets 60,000, and I think I make a pretty big mistake by calling. I didn't really think about it that much. I just thought, 
you know, like when I check three streets, he's just going to think I don't have anything or he might bet a worse 10. But really when he bets that sizing, I think it's top pair or better most of the time. He could even have some flushes that he checks back the turn with. So I don't really like my call. He turns over queen jack offsuit and it is obviously good. In this next hand, I am down to 400,000. Lost a couple more small pots in the meantime. I open ace queen of hearts to 18,000 from the hijack. The cutoff calls and Maurice calls in the big blind. The flop comes 963 with one heart and two diamonds. Checks around. I could see bet here, but it's a pretty bad flop for my perceived opening range. And I do have some showdown value as well as uh, backdoor flush draw and two overs. So we just check around. The turns of five of clubs checks to me and for similar reasoning as the flop I check. I don't think I can get better to fold a whole lot and I'm certainly not getting called by worse really. Uh, so it checks around again. The river's the two of hearts and Maurice now bets 50,000. I didn't think it really made sense. Uh, I thought most of his value hands would bet the turn and only a couple things improve on this river card. Like it's pretty hard for him to improve on that card. Uh, so thinking that everyone's shown so much weakness, he could definitely just stab. Uh, I call. Turns over King 10 of hearts and uh, I obviously turn it over and my hand is good. Uh, Maurice Hawkins being a little bit of a bad sport as he seems to always be, uh, shakes his head and tells me I should quit poker now. Yeah, he, he actually said that. I have played with him before. I'm aware of kind of this level of behavior and doesn't really bother me too much. It's kind of annoying, frankly, because it's so immature, uh, but there's not really much I can do about it. He never says really enough to get reprimanded by the dealer. The other thing is he's super nice to everyone except for the poker players around him. So he's nice to dealers, he's nice to four people. I don't really think if I make a stink about him just telling me to quit poker, anything's gonna happen. So whatever, I take it in stride. In this next hand, we are at the 5K, 10K level now, still a 1K ante. I have about 525,000. I open jacks to 20,000. First middle position spot calls, and there are two more calls. So we go four way to a flop. The flop is pretty good. It's jack seven, six with two diamonds. I have the jack of diamonds in my hand. Checks to me, and I make a C bet for 45,000. Middle position is the only caller. The turn brings the ace of diamonds, which might not be the worst card in the deck, but it's up there. Uh, I decide to check. He bets 83,000, and I make the call, mostly because it's possible he could be betting worse at this point, and I also have draws to full houses at this point. The river does not bring us any good news. It's the deuce of spades. I check it over to him. He now jams 261,000. Now, I think in a lot of situations, in a lot of cash games, and a lot of smaller tournaments, this would be like the fastest snap fold ever. But the problem with this exact spot is that there's just not that many flush combinations he can have. Because the ace of diamonds is out there, he can't have ace x of diamonds. I have the jack of diamonds in my hand, so I block king jack, queen jack, and jack 10. And I'm opening an early position, so I don't think he's necessarily calling with a lot of the really bad diamond combinations like gappers. He probably has 8, 9, and 9, 10, and he definitely has king, queen of diamonds. But other than that, there's just not a lot of combinations. Plus, if he has 8, 9 of diamonds, he can have the other suited 8, 9s, which are straight draws on this board. So I felt like I was in a pretty tough spot. This was like the only spot in the tournament where I actually tanked for more than a minute, minute and a half. I thought for probably like three or four minutes, and I, I really hate tanking. I hate taking a long time for decisions, but this was a hard spot for me. In the end, I did finally fold, and uh, he promised to, I asked and he promised to tell me what he had at the end of the day. Basically, I, I concluded that even if he had bet 8-9 suited on the turn as a bluff, it's really, really hard for him to just stick it all in there on the river on a complete bluff for his tournament life with still a decent amount of chips left, like playable stack. So I made the fold. At the end of the day, he told me I had king, queen of diamonds. Doesn't surprise me in the slightest. Really glad I made that fold, uh, even though it was a very tough spot. This next hand was maybe the most critical part of the tournament for me. I'm down to about 350k, which is pretty much what I started the day with. And that's about 35 big blinds here. A loose player opens in middle position to 22,000. 
I'm in the small blind with 10 native clubs, and I decided to call. The big blind also calls, and we catch one of the better flops for this hand. It's 9-7 deuce rainbow. We do have a backdoor flush draw. It checks to the preflop raiser, who bets 45,000. He has less than 200k, I think, when we get to the flop. So I'm pretty much just planning to uh, raise to either get folds from his air or get it in against some over pairs or, you know, 9x where I have a lot of equity. I make it 150k, which makes it very clear I'm not going anywhere if he shoves. Big blind folds, he middle position does in fact shove. I call off the rest and he has ace nine. Uh, so we kind of run into it here. It's, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of hands I think he would fold. This is just not one that he can. Uh, and we are off to the races. I do have one over against his nine, which is better shape than I would be against, say, pocket jacks or something like that. The turn is a five of hearts, which doesn't bring any good news, doesn't give us any more additional equity, but the river is the very beautiful ten of hearts. So I get there, I make a better pair than his nine, and I stack that player. Puts me at 600k, which, while it isn't a monster stack, is 60 big blinds at this level, puts me in great shape to make it through to day four. In the last level of the day, we are at the 6k, 12k at level with the 2k ante. Really big ante. This is a big level. Uh, even though I have 50 blinds, you know, they come around fast. So trying to make something happen here. Would love to get a bigger stack for day four. Uh, but also obviously don't want to bust. Want to get there. I have about 550k. There's a guy who's new to the table who opens to 30,000. And it folds to me. I make it 85k with red jacks on the button. I actually don't know that I love 3-betting here at the stack size. It's a little bit awkward if I get 4-bet. Uh, I don't know this player, so I wouldn't kind of mind playing a smaller pot against him until I figure him out. But there's also, you know, the case of missing value if I don't 3-bet. So I can kind of go both ways with it. He just calls. Thought comes 7 6 4 with 2 diamonds. He checks. I go ahead and bet 75,000, and he makes it 175,000. This is the kind of spot I was trying to avoid. Uh, I'm in a very awkward spot where he hasn't really raised it that big so i am getting a good price but people don't usually make this kind of sizing with just pure bluffs and i don't really know anything about this player uh if i call you know there's two more streets to play and i'm going to be in a tough spot pretty much no matter what comes unless i just spike a miracle jack i decided to fold you know i think i think you can definitely make a case for for maybe jamming uh, you can definitely make a case for calling but I'm in a tough spot. I don't think people really check raise small with tens here that often. Uh, and there's certainly sets in his range as well at this stacked up. So I just let it go. Um, didn't get to see what he had. It was a tough fold for me, but at the end of the day, I thought my chips were valuable enough uh, at this stack size uh, to just fold here. And that was really the last hand I played at this on this day. Uh, I didn't really pick up any other spots. I didn't even really get to raise after that. I was kind of all slow downhill from there. There was a guy on my left tanking because he got crippled and he was trying to make it to another pay jump. He did make it to the pay jump, so play sped up after that, but I just didn't pick up any hands. I ended the day with 290,000, uh, which you may remember is actually less than I started with. Started with 353,500, down to 290K. Not the best spot, but hey, I made day four. Gonna try to see what I can turn it into. Pretty frustrating end of the day. I had a hundred bigs for uh, the whole day and for, you know, a large portion of the tournament up until the last three levels of the night tonight. I just really didn't get a lot of hands and the hands that I did were tough spots often so I did bag technically on day three so I'm coming back to day four but I bagged less than I started the day with started the day with 353 500 now I am I only have 290 so that's a problem because it's gonna be a 16k big blind tomorrow there won't be much room for anything a lot of big stacks. I think I'm gonna be in the bottom 10, bottom 10 out of 56 who remain. We're gonna be two spots off a of pay jump. That's gonna be worth about 1,800. I have a little over 10K locked up. And 
yeah, there's not much else to say. Uh, you know, it's gonna be kind of silly because there's gonna be a lot of shove spots. And, you know, obviously the field's a little tough at this point. So, you know, there's not like gonna be a lot of super profitable spots to shove. But you never know. I mean, the drought could end in terms of hand selection. Could pick up some big hands, could pick up some good spots. You never know, we'll see what happens. It is now past 2 a.m. I believe. So I just need to go pass out. <sighs> Cards in the air at noon, less than 10 hours away. Let's go.